Now let's have a look at DNA and polypeptide synthesis. And our inquiry question is, why is polypeptide synthesis important? So this diagram is the key here. This is our central dogma. So we essentially begin with DNA, where replication has occurred, we replicate our DNA. Um, once that has occurred, now DNA is important for a survival. And that's because one of the key things that DNA does is that it allows us to make the proteins that we need to survive. Um, most of the things in our, uh, most of the processes in our bodies require those proteins, like the enzymes that we have are proteins, the hormones that we have are proteins. Um, so proteins are really, really important. So what happens is we have our DNA um, and then we're going to use that DNA to have have two processes occur. The first process is transcription, where we then change the um, the DNA sequences from DNA to RNA. So this is where RNA comes in. And then once we have the um, RNA sequence, we then translate it to make proteins. So think of it like um, transcription is basically like writing down the recipe, uh, like writing down a recipe for a specific dish that you want to make. And translation is then actually cooking that recipe in the kitchen. So let's have a look at what this really involves. So let's begin with transcription first. So in transcription, um, the RNA polymerase will bind to a promoter sequence. So whereas in DNA was the DNA polymerase, in transcription, it's actually RNA polymerase. So here we are. So RNA polymerase right there will bind to a promoter section. Now here's the thing with the uh, with polypeptide synthesis. It's the fact that we don't actually need to unwind the whole DNA to make our proteins. Um, we only need so. At times, we're only go like at different times. We're going to need different parts. Um, uh, we're going to need sorry. At different times, we're going to need different proteins, which means we're going to open up different parts of the DNA at different times. So not the whole DNA is being opened in like replication, right? So in replication, we replicate the whole thing. In polypeptide synthesis, that's not the case. We are only taking a specific bit to produce a specific hormones. Uh, sorry, to produce a specific uh, a specific proteins. So, let me just grab a quick sip. Okay, here we are. So, once that has happened, um, our RNA polymerase will move along the DNA strand and it will unwind a small region of the DNA. So this is the coding strand. So this is the strand that we actually want to code. So to get this strand, we're going to code its um, complementary strand so that we can get this combination here. Um, so RNA polymerase is going to read that DNA strand that we had, the DNA template strand, um, and then it's going to match the complementary free floating nucleotides to create an mRNA chain. Um, and it does that it creates the mRNA chain. Now remember two differences between RNA and DNA is that in RNA there is ribose sugar in comparison to dioxyribose in DNA and RNA is also going sorry is also going to have uracil instead of adding uh, sorry instead of thymine. So uracil replaces thymine um, and that's sort of the key there as well. Um, okay, so what happens is that once that has happened, once the um, RNA polymerase reads the DNA template strand, it matches the complementary free-floating nucleotides to create an mRNA chain. And mRNA stands for messenger RNA, so it's basically taking a message. Think of it that way, it's a messenger. Um, and then once the process is done, the terminator sequence ends the transcription of the DNA. So there is a terminator sequence, and as the name suggests, it stops the process because we don't want, again, we, we're not unwinding the whole DNA, we are only taking a bit of the protein that we, so a bit of the um, sequence that we need to make our protein. And finally, once that is done, we go through a process called post um, post transitional modifications. So what that means is, um, we are going to splice out the bits that we don't need. So the DNA, not the whole DNA does not code for proteins. Um, how it, uh, the, yeah, it does not code for proteins because it has other um, like junk sequences as well. Um, so what we do is, once we get that, once we have our, 
Oops, once we have a strand here, we realize, for example, we may not need some of these introns, some of these things here that don't actually code for protein. So we can splice it out, we can cut it out, and that way we only have the DNA that we need. Sorry, we don't need, we only have the RNA that we need because it's in RNA form. It's in mRNA, so it's a mature mRNA. So mature mRNA is when it has gone through its um, post -transla uh, translational modifications. Okay, so that brings us to translation. mRNA is the scribe, right? It is the messenger. It has written down the recipe. Now it's going to take that recipe to the ribosomes, to the kitchen. So once you write down the recipe, you found a recipe on YouTube that you really like, you wrote it down and now you're going to actually go ahead and cook it. But you to cook it, you can't just cook it in your living room. You can't cook it in your bedroom. You can't cook it in your balcony, right? You actually need to, like, to properly cook. You need to go to the kitchen where all the equipment is. And that, in this case, is the ribosome for the body. So, for the cells, rather. So, it's in those ribosomes where we actually see the last part of this process play out. That's where translation happens. So, the, what the ribosome does is, here we are. So this is in the ribosome, this is our messenger RNA. Messenger RNA has come to the ribosome, it's like, hey, I found, oh, hey, here is the um, sequence for the proteins we need to make. Ribosome's like, all right, I'm on it. Um, what that does is that the ribosome matches complementary tRNA molecules to mRNA. As soon as it says I'm on it, we see this um, molecule tRNA come in as well. And basically, tRNA, what we have here are these anticodons. So the ones on the mRNA are known, are known as codons. The ones on the tRNA are anticodons. So the anticodons and the codons are going to match to one another. And with each anticodon, we're going to produce a specific amino acid based on the, um, the sequence of the anticodon. Um, so as each subsequent RNA docks to the, um, it docks to the mRNA here, it's going to lead to a polypeptide bond. So it's border amino acid, it's going to dock. That other one's border amino acid and it's going to dock. And these amino acids are going to form bonds between them and that's what we call a polypeptide bond. And a polypeptide, a polypeptide chain is elongated by continued addition of amino acids. So that keeps happening we keep finding these we keep um finding these amino acids right and it keeps um it keeps sort of lining up now remember amino acids are the functional units of proteins so that's what amino acids are so essentially once that chain is elongated um we are going to reach a stop sequence whenever that protein is finished we're going to reach a stop sequence a sequence that tells it to stop this process so that it can be released um, once that happens the ribosome releases the rna so once that stop sequence is reached the ribosome here is going to let that um, mrna go and it is going to also release this polypeptide molecule over here and as a result then this polypeptide molecule is going to fold over in different shapes um, it's also going to undergo post translational modifications um, and then that will result in a mature protein being ready to use in the cell so protein structure and function so um, the fundamental unit of a protein is amino acids they're the functional units um, and they have various side chains um, the primary structure is when these when there is a sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain sorry chain the secondary structure is the formation of alpha helices and beta sheets um, tertiary structure is the formation of overall 3D um, structures and side group interactions between these um, between these amino acids for maximum stability. And finally, the quaternary structure is when multiple protein subunits are involved. They are interacting. So what are the functions? Protein is important for uh, for spore and structure. So in terms of macromolecular uh, macro macromolecular um, substances, keratin is made of is protein, um, and so is tubulin, which is micromolecular. It's part of the cells. Um, enzymes are also made of protein, so we they are biological catalysts, and we need them. And a really big example is ATP synthesis, which allows us to produce ATP, which is energy. 
antibodies are an essential part of the immune system and again they are proteins they're made of proteins and that includes things like immunoglob immunoglobulins we have messengers, so that includes um, our hormonal messengers like oxytocin. And finally, protein is really important for storage and transport. So moving um, molecules into cells and around cells um, requires the production of um, these, these, these stores. And an example of that is ferritin, which stores iron.